Okay, okay. So it definitely appears like we have a lot to catch up on, but this is kind of a newer format. We're trying something a little different. This here is a Smart Five podcast. We're still trying to come up with the proper name for it. We want it to be catchy. We want it to be good. But without any further ado, let me introduce you to my man here, Mr. Aaron Tilton, the CEO of the cryptocurrency platform SmartFi. Aaron, we're going to try something a little different on this one, man. How are you feeling? <laughs> Good, man. Yeah, I mean, the, the last thing maybe we did was awesome. We had like over 5,000 views. So we thought, hey, we need to start doing this more often um, and, and make sure that we're providing the right education for people who may not be familiar with crypto or new to crypto or even right. if they are in crypto and have been crypto for a long time. Certainly what SmartFi does is different. It's safer. It's simpler. And this podcast is designed to help do a couple of those things to educate, but also illustrate that there's not really a need to become a day trader with, with crypto, right? Yeah. So we're going to talk about some other cooler stuff, just life in general. We're going to talk about some music. I know that Joseph got a little dating advice. Maybe, you know, we got to <laughs> later. Uh, you might have some marital advice. We got all kinds of cool stuff to talk about. Crypto shouldn't consume your life. It should be something that you do yeah. to increase your your uh, net worth, but not take over your life and become some kind of giant, you know, day trader, you know, and have it consume you. So, yeah. well, just, we're gonna pick up some of those things. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I even I even believe. Uh... Our man Paul, who's kind of helping us put this together, was talking about how we might be talking about uh, Cobra Tate, Andrew Tate. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, there's, there's a lot we're going to be going over in this one. So um, I guess to start, man, uh, one, congratulations. Spent some time with you out in Tennessee. Congratulations on making it out to Loretta Lynn's. Uh, that's your second time doing an amateur race that I tried to get into for years, man. So uh, I look up to you in that yeah. aspect, man, and I, uh, I'm, hoping, I'm hoping I can get there one day, man. That um, race was about survival for me. That was so hot. It was crazy. <laughs> it was so hot. But yeah. <laughs> yeah, you see, I was rock I was rocking the no sleeves. It was yeah. uh it was definitely a uh a more intense experience than I was expecting just being a spectator, man. You had to stay hydrated and everything. Um, but yeah, while we were out there as well, we'll also be going over a little bit of um our concept of crypto for good. Um we had, you know, a couple people that we ran into on this trip that yeah. had opportunities to be able to help out, be able to keep passing it forward. And um, yeah, we actually got a lot of crypto for good content to uh, be coming out from this trip to um, stole a, a dirt bike that got stolen where we tried. To yeah, you got a wild story, man, that, uh, that obviously turned out to be something we didn't anticipate, which was totally cool right i mean maybe you can kind of tell a little bit about that uh so people are like you know they may not know that your your motorcycle got stolen yeah. a couple months ago right yeah. so maybe tell, let's and we're going to go into some of that at the very end maybe you can kind of tell a little bit about that yeah so um during supercross at the detroit round this was in january february i believe it was in march i think it was like late march maybe yeah. We were in Detroit, and um, while in Detroit, I had my dirt bike. I was uh, going to go to a couple tracks, trying to start getting used to the bike setup and everything. And a white suburban pulled up. They had it on. Uh, they had it on on footage, but they couldn't identify the people. A white suburban pulled up. Four guys hopped out, stole my dirt bike in like less than thirty seconds. Cut locks, everything. Like they were they were well greased. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They were ready. And uh, yeah, they got away with my bike and it was gone for months. It was gone for like three, almost four months. And uh, I started to lose hope. And then uh, out of nowhere, I got hit up. Yeah, I think we have a, uh, a, a little clip here. Yeah. Right there. Yeah, check it out. You want to go ahead and throw that up, Paul? Star racing is full of winners. And I look like a loser because I got the bike stolen. We just found the dirt bike. Oh, shit. Got me five times. Whoa. Lucky to be alive and breathing for real. I have to decide, what do I do? Do I get the police involved? Do I try and figure out how to do this myself? Yeah. Yeah, so that's that's a little trailer we put together for this for this three-part series. 
Um, that that of course concludes with with a crypto for good that came you know out of out of nowhere. So uh, the twists and turns that that's coming with that story is um, definitely going to be insane, man. But I wanted to know your thoughts. Um, one, I know we have we have a guest coming on, um, yeah. so I want to know who that's going to be. And on top of that, uh, we got to experience some crypto for good together. So I want to kind of know what your thoughts were on that journey as well. Yeah. So coming up. Um... We'll have uh, a guy named Dan Hemmert. So Dan, okay. somebody I met a number of years ago, and uh, he currently in the state of Utah is the executive director of what's called the Governor's Office of Economic Opportunity, or Go Utah. Yeah. And so he's basically a cabinet level member of the governor of the state of Utah. He's a former state legislator. Um, it was in the Senate, so a state senator. And also, um, he's a business owner, uh, was a CFO for a software company, and then also practiced law as a securities attorney for a big firm in D.C. Super amazing guy, lots of good experience. Uh, he, and he also happens to be a customer of SmartFi, but he's, you know, he's into crypto, uh, or I, I should say this, Probably not as into it as as spending spent all his time, yeah, you know, waking yeah. hours into crypto. But he knows about it, understands it. He's a customer of ours, um, and I thought he would be a great person to get online and, uh, and talk about some of the events that are happening in in crypto and and going through some of these details about you know the state. Where actually there's a uh, a task force. It's called the Digital Asset and Blockchain Task Force for the state of Utah, where we have some. So bills that we're working on that are going to provide some safety and security for crypto owners and where the state will start to officially recognize certain things around cryptocurrencies. We'll talk about that a little bit later on today. Actually, that task force, um, the first meeting is live at 6 p.m. Eastern or 4 p.m. Mountain Time. Uh, and I'm a member of the task force. I was named uh, to that task force. So it'll be interesting. Dan will be commenting on that a little bit. Uh, but also about some bills he passed re regarding crypto, uh, gosh, in 2019, 2018, if I remember correctly, about money transmission licenses. So super experienced guy, um, but he'll be on uh, shortly with us. OK, well, before he hops on, let's take it back to the mining disrupt. OK, so this was this is an event where I kind of really started to wrap my head around like the yeah. different intricacies and like processes that come with crypto mining. Uh, dollar cost averaging, like all of this information was kind of getting thrown in my direction and absorbed at this event. Uh, me personally, I feel as though when it came to mining, I never even knew what that meant. I didn't even know what the concept of mining cryptocurrency was. Yeah. But if I were to try and relay it, from my understanding now, mining is where you have these little calculator type computers and their whole sole purpose is to mine Bitcoin or mine a cryptocurrency. So the the machines, these little calculators, what they do is they they solve problems in the blockchain, right? Am I, am I going in the right direction? They solve problems yeah. in the blockchain. Yeah. And when they solve that problem, the blockchain rewards that calculator computer for solving that problem. So whoever owns that little calculator computer device is technically the person who receives the reward from that machine being able to solve the problem. Yeah. And, and what the problem does, right? So this, this um, algorithm, right? It's a structured process and there's a, what's called a one, a nonce or one time use number. I won't, you know, it's probably not, necessarily going all the deep technical things yeah. but basically these miners are just essentially accountants and they do okay. two things one they, re they um they record the transactions for the blockchain so they're the ones that validate transactions make sure they're authorized and then they provide the security for that, those transactions through a consensus mechanism which means they all agree on it and go through that process and so that that is the backbone of the bitcoin network without it there's no such thing as bitcoin so these servers, or they're like, you know, supercomputer calculators, they yeah. don't store data, they, they compute, they try to solve this algorithmic problem quicker and faster 
than other computers. So it's mm -hmm. like, a, and that's how the network is secured. That's how all the transactions are recorded. And that's how the Bitcoin network came, came into existence. Right. So these computers are kind of like in a race. So therefore, the people who have like the smarter and faster computers are actually the ones who can solve more problems. So like if I were like, OK, in my, in my little office studio area here, I'm just going to get one little computer. It's like I'm already kind of behind on the curve because these guys have like, for example, the oil. The, the, I don't know if it was vegetable <laughs> oil or, or 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 what it was, but it's dielectric yeah. fluid. Yeah. yeah, yeah, dielectric fluid, right? Right. Yeah, yeah. I was about to cause a fire. I was gonna put like some some virgin olive oil or something. They put the machines inside that dielectric fluid, and it keeps the machine like cool and running stuff. Like it's it's pretty souped up, man. So all that information, it was all new for me. It was all stuff that I was that I was new to learning. Um, but then also what was cool was kind of experiencing a crypto for good with you, where we kind of took the trip from Miami to Tennessee. And while we were there, we ran into the guy who, uh, who was needing a little help. And that's where I got to kind of see you get involved with some like hands on, like I'm talking like loving on the man, dude, like really helping. Yeah. Turn yeah. I mean, that's the idea behind crypto for good and what you've been doing, you know, with SmartFi. It's been awesome to watch you kind of take that and run with it. But you know, making money doesn't really mean anything unless you can help somebody, right? And change somebody's life. So I think we got a little clip here. We were at the go, we were racing go karts. Yeah, <laughs> I got spanked too, dude. I was talking. Yeah, so I much told spanked. you. I told you. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe you can tell a little bit about this guy, kind of what. Yeah, what yeah. Happened. That's that's what was crazy is I was actually out there just filming an intro, uh, putting something together, and this shot right here is actually me coming back in, letting you know that while I was filming the intro. This guy comes up and he's like, hey, look, this is my situation. Like, um, this is this is where I could use a little help. And I'm, I'm like, dude, this no, this can't be true because I'm out there not even thinking about crypto for good. And, and this guy approaches. And this is something that strangely happens when 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 we're when we're doing our thing, man. It's like things just naturally start to line up. So right here, I, I explain it to you and, and we go outside. The guy, he waited patiently. We came outside. He told his story. And after telling his story, it was like, all right, let's 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 see what we can do. And um, a video that was initially just going to be uh, informative about, you know, the, the different intricacies of SmartFi and the um, and the benefits, you know, of being able to go out, ride go karts with your son, like be able to have that free time. It ended up turning into a crypto for good, man, just out of the blue. And it was a uh, it was amazing. It was amazing to experience that, man. Yeah. And, it, you know, sometimes you're not sure about who are, you know, they, they approached us. And most of the time we're approaching somebody else because we can kind of make the observation about, hey, this person looks like they could use some help. This guy approached us. So, you know, like in some cases you just don't judge. You need to say, all right, we'll take him at his word. Let's help the guy, right? Yeah. And, and that's what it kind of turned into. You know, he talked about, if I remember correctly, that he'd just gotten out of prison. Yeah. Needed some help. He was staying at somebody's house, you know. And then uh, we happened to have the cash on hand for some crypto for good stuff that we were saying, hey, I hope we run into a situation where we could do that. And I, I think it just goes to show that, one, you don't have to be, you know, a gazillionaire to go out and do the things that we do. Um, you know, we, we, we try to, we have the resources to do that, but right. even just somebody like this, a hundred bucks made a massive difference to this dude. Right. Right. You right. could see him tearing up, you know, it was, it was changing his life. Maybe if just for a day or two, right. right. To, to ease his worry, you know, that, that he was going to have what he needed, or at least some of the resources that he needed for a little while. And, that's really the concept around SmartFi as well, is right. We, we're going to make things simpler, safer, and easier for people. Not only with the token and with what we do, you know, with SmartFi and the platform, but just the average person that we run into any day. I don't care if they join the platform, don't join the, you know, do any of these things. Somebody needs the help. We're gonna we're gonna try to give them, you know, sometimes a hand out, sometimes a hand up. Just yeah. depends on what's going on, right? And. That's what I like to do. I think that's what you like to do. In fact, I think a lot of people like to do that. And so with supporting SmartFi, anybody who belongs to SmartFi is part of that. Yeah. Right. 
they're making a contribution. SmartFi is obviously making money when we do these things, you know, with our token and and with the platform and all these things. And then sometimes we take some of that money and we go help people. Like when we went to Guatemala, that was right. awesome. You know, that was cool. I mean, there's there's so many things that we've done. We, you've been doing a bunch of them. We're going to be releasing more of these videos. And the one about your <laughs> your dirt bike getting stolen. I, yeah. I'm, gonna, I'm trying not to blow the ending there. But uh, there, the, I'll just say it involves a guy who's been shot five times. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, and this other guy who crashed, landed yeah, yeah. on his face, looked like he got knocked out or something, had to go to the hospital, get stitches. Yeah. But in all that craziness and all the stuff that happened, you were able to take that opportunity and make a difference in some lives. And uh, I think tomorrow premieres, I think at the end of this, if so everybody stay tuned, but in the end of this live stream, uh, we're going to, Joseph is going to show you, I think it's episode two or is it three? Yeah. Episode two, episode, episode two, of two of that's right. Trilogy. And exactly. then three, three is the finale, which is crazy, exactly. crazy, crazy, crazy. But, um, and then there's some other ones that you know, we're going to talk about. And I, I know we've got our agenda. We're probably running real, way, way too long. But I want to talk about the other lady that we met in Tennessee. Yes. That one, man, that was. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, was, that, 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 that was a sobering one. You know, it's, yeah. like, it's like you're having a good time. You know, you're just kind of chilling, relaxing. And you start, you start hearing her story. You're like, oh, you know, like. Yeah, you Whoa. You realize it doesn't matter what we do with any money or with whatever we're going to help her with. She, you know, she definitely could have used that, and then she was going to help other people with it. But it wasn't going to solve the difficulty in her life, and nobody yeah. could because her husband had passed away. Yeah. Right. Her yeah. house had been totally destroyed. Yeah. There was a giant flood in Waverly, Tennessee, last year. And in this small little town, uh, there were 20 people that lost their lives. Yeah. That was, that was, yeah, sobering to say the least, right? And, and to hear her story and, you know, so there'll, there'll be some more of those coming out in, in the coming weeks, uh, which is awesome. Uh, I'm trying to see if we got Dan. Did we, did we have Dan? Did Dan jump on? I don't want to take up a lot of time on crypto for good, although I'd love to, and that's all out of it. You know, if we could, would do all of that, right? Yeah. But, um, anyways, um, let's if, let's talk. Go ahead. If he, if he, if he's not on, um, I'm very interested to hear your thoughts on this Andrew Tate Cobra Tate guy. Okay. So yeah, let me tell our our producer. It says Dan says he's backstage. He just texted me. So somebody's got to let Dan in. Okay. There we go. Hey. Hey, how What's you doing? What's going on, man? How you doing? You're yeah, no, muted. I've been yeah. sitting there. Yeah, I've been sitting. Oh, oh there we go. I am muted? No, we can hear you. Sorry, you're good. Okay. No, yeah, I've been sitting here watching your dialogue and the intro, and, and that's pretty uh, – when I was just watching the intro, I was like, oh, man, I don't know if I'm ready for this. This is pretty intense stuff. Yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, we, we appreciate that, man. Another level. Yeah, yeah. But- <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. Yeah, let me so again I wanna I just want to introduce everybody to, to you, Dan. And and uh I mean you've done so many amazing things in your life so far. It's all downhill from here, I'm sure, but uh you've done so many things from securities attorney at a big law firm in, in DC, owned a number of businesses, CFO at a business, ran for office as a, a state and was elected as a state senator for the state of Utah. And now uh, you were invited and tapped and you accepted the the invitation of the governor to run his uh, Office of Economic Opportunity at Go Utah, I think is the acronym. And yeah, right. Yeah, so it's, I mean, maybe you can tell us a little bit about some of the amazing things that you're involved with in, in Utah in helping to attract companies to come to Utah I know it has a little bit, we'll talk a little bit later about the cryptocurrency stuff that we're doing. And, and then also you passed a law a few years ago related to cryptocurrencies. So you certainly have some experience and you just happen to be a SmartFi customer as well. 
So, but yeah, so what's going on in Utah? I'll, I'll start with the law first, just to say that's where you and I met. If you remember, yeah. if you recall, so I, I ran a law or a bill in the state of Utah that exempted um, blockchain technologies. That's what it was, what it was tied to from the money transfer act in the state of Utah yeah. and didn't do it because you had called me and asked me or anyone to is actually I didn't know you uh, at the time, right? It, right. Passed it. Yeah. It was a, a libertarian think tank uh, that's here in Utah called the Libertas Institute. Um, they reached out to me and said, hey, we want to get ahead of cryptocurrency and avoid uh, allowing blockchain, blockchain and blockchain derivative technologies from getting caught up in the existing regulatory framework, financial regulatory framework. And so they approached me about running. I was like, yeah, sure, let's do it. And it was after that that you reached out to me and said, hey, you did this. Do you even know what you did? I was like, no, not really. You know, that's not, you know, none of us know what we're doing. Um, it was awesome. helpful, yeah. Yeah, and then and then you and I just became friends. But to get back to your first question, so I so I yeah, so I run a, a government agency called the Governor's Office of Economic Opportunity. It used to be called the Governor's Office of Economic Development, which candidly is probably a little more straightforward in in naming relative to what we do. We're the economic development agency for the state of Utah. So yeah. we spend our time worrying about Utah's future economy and making sure that, um, I guess, that, that our kids, so we're not worried about you, or we're not worried about anyone on this call, and probably not too worried about anyone watching I this. I know you this love video. me, I know video. that. <laughs> no, we're worried about the next generation. So we're worried about uh, a 12 year old kid who's gonna you know, join the workforce in 10 years or something. That's what we're worried about and making sure the, the right jobs and the right industries are available for them in the state of Utah. And so uh, we, we have some incentives we, we do like this is kind of crazy and I'm going to say it this way, but it's kind of wild to say I have the power by myself to uh, lower companies tax rates. And, and that's just that's kind of crazy. You know, that, that power is vested in me yeah. by statute. It's just kind of crazy to think that, that someone can do that. Um, and, and I mean, there's parameters around it, of course, but it's just kind of wild. And then you, you know, you were in the legislature era and you know, like you had the ability to, to make law and that's yeah. just kind of crazy. And, and I don't know if you remember, Aaron, I went with you to a crypto conference in Vegas yep. a couple of years ago. That's before I was in this role. And we were talking about legislation and running it. And, and the moderator made this comment about uh, you can make laws and that's kind of this crazy superpower and 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 being in government there is there's this kind of weird uh, ability to do things that's unique but that's that's kind of what we do we worry about the economy we we like to say we're the stewards of the economy our agency fully recognized that it's really entrepreneurs that do everything and not government we just take credit for everything you guys do as entrepreneurs and innovators or we place blame on anything you do uh, <laughs> So uh, that that's kind of the role I'm, 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 you know, sitting here in a tie in my, my lame office because uh, I'm a, a full, full in uh, bureaucrat now. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, also, I guess, so the other thing you mentioned, uh, I am a customer. I want to say as one of your earlier customers. It's been a um, yeah. Yeah, I want to say as one of your earlier customers and, and have been tracking what you've been doing with SmartFi back before it was SmartFi, uh, you know, yeah. and uh, you just have been so impressed with what you've done. Um, the SMTF token, like it's been so cool to watch you create a, a token that's that's based on a different principle, based on a different platform than just, you know, every, everyone criticizes and you all know this. I mean, it, and I follow this stuff and track this stuff, but the whole uh, greater fools theory and all that stuff, your token is different in that it's not just a hot potato. And that's part of what's attracted me to what you've been doing from day one when we met. You just had a different approach to this whole whole, whole sector. Um, I don't know. What else did you ask me that I'm supposed to talk about? Uh, or is that enough? <laughs> I think you, you got quite a bit in there. We are going to, we want to get some marital advice and dating advice from you. It's been a long time since you dated. <laughs> we're going to talk about yeah. music. And I guess this is part of the thing, right? Is that 
with what we do with the token, when you buy the token, uh, it has this buyback guarantee. So you don't have to turn into some kind of a day trader, right? It's going to be absorbed by whether the price is up or down or all these other things because of the, the floor that we have. It's backed by loans. It has more like a banking function where when you, you buy the token, it, the, the proceeds go to make loans and we can use that to back the token. Totally novel, and, totally different, u- unique in, in the space for sure. And Aaron, I, I don't, do you know how when the last time I logged into my account was? To your point, on you don't have to track it and watch your. You want, want to know the last time I logged into my account? I have no I, idea. I mean, you can go. Look, you can go look on your end. I have so access. Wait, to that. I, you know, I can find out, right? But, <laughs> but I bet it was like three or four months ago, maybe even six yeah. months ago. To your point, it's a different type of investment. Uh, if, if, if I think, if you're looking to uh, buy into the crypto phenomenon, yeah. So, and when you buy the token, you're joining a community that funds small businesses, right? Economic development. It has and, and a utility. It has a purpose. Yeah. That's exactly right. And it is, it's, it's, I know you're not a bank and banks get upset when you talk about banks and use that word, but you're a financial institution that does provide yeah. uh, an important element in economy. Access to capital is one of the single biggest predictors of an economy's ability to expand yeah. and you're providing access to capital in a non-traditional format uh which is is cool and it's pioneering and it's it's pretty 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 awesome yeah i mean it, it all stemmed from our experience you know in the earlier days and and you know i, I think there's some things we want to talk about i mean it kind of juxtapose you know, what SmartFi does with maybe some of the other things uh, that are out there, like uh, this crypto, uh, what's his name? The uh, crypto Cobra guy, whatever his name is, Cobra Tate. Cobra Tate, yeah. Right. Again, I don't follow a bunch of this crazy stuff, but I know he's like blowing up everywhere, all of these things. And he's a former kickboxing champion. I learned a little bit about him, did some research and stuff. Um, and the interesting thing, I have a quote. He... <laughs> He moved to Romania, right? And he was, uh, you know, talking about, you know, getting people into DeFi and doing all these things. But his quote, let me just say this. Uh, and I think this is the difference between the state of Utah, right? And the environment that's in Utah and the, and the elected officials and appointed officials like Dan and others that we're working with, right? Uh, we've been talking with the, the attorney general of the state of Utah, Sean Reyes. Uh, I think he may be on the program here sometime soon. Uh, Kurt Colomore, we've got a bunch of Senator Colomore, I should say, where their goal is to enable companies like ours to operate safely uh, within the confines of a regulatory construct that doesn't choke uh, a business and, and gives an equal playing field to everybody. And in this task force that we're going to be, uh, in fact, that's later today at uh, four o'clock mountain time. Uh, I was named to this task force because I have some legislative history and you know experience there, but uh, uh, the, the governor's office, uh, and I know somebody from the governor's, who's on that from the governor's office? I don't remember yeah. that you there. I know I'm taxing yeah, your You don't know everything that's going on in the governor's office, man, right? The tip of your fingers. But. Yeah. So we've got uh, uh, Senator Colomore is the chair of the, the task force from the Senate side. Uh, then there's uh, uh, Jordan Tusher, Representative Tusher from uh, the House. And then the, the Attorney General's office has somebody, a bunch of people, and, and they're working with industry to basically build this structure around the security of a token, right? And making sure that the state recognizes the inherent rights that we have as token holders and to not only build a construct, a legal construct that makes it safer, but to also get out of the way and make sure that the right. government is not being too intrusive, right? But providing the, the recognition for these companies and these token holders and all of these things. Well, and then, and then you know, the, you can say it's overbearing, but like most of the protections that have gone into place around securities law, for example, is also there to protect someone that's maybe 
shouldn't be buying certain things yeah. and, and avoiding avoiding mischief on the other side and and so you were saying like so the one there's the there's the protect your property rights you know and create a, a safe environment within to operate that doesn't that's not over regulated and and still right. protects i think an important part of the decentralized finance movement which is it's out of government um yeah. but still offer some of those consumer protections that uh government can provide in, a, in an appropriate way. And then the other piece of the uh, blockchain task force that I think is cool is more even than crypto and more even than, than tokens in the finance side, I think you're also going to be uh, spending a lot of time talking about what are things that could happen policy wise in government to implement just blockchain technology. Yeah. Uh, from car titles to real estate titles to voting. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot, and then it's getting smart guys like you who live in, you might be living in the crypto space, but it's all based on a technology with blockchain underlying it. And where can you take that underlying technology and apply it elsewhere to make government faster, cheaper, and a better, better service for the citizens who, for whom it's supposed to exist to serve. Yeah. And, and maybe back to your point, your agency is to enable the future 12 year olds of this state to have the best opportunities to take advantage of this technology by enabling this innovation and building right. laws and structure all those things around the support of it and let it flourish. That's what I love about right. Utah. When I was, you know, in, in the legislature, I can really say that, you know, we have one of the most business friendly elected officials environment, you know, in the country for sure. Very conservative. A lot of libertarian influences here about leave me alone. You know, the state of Utah has a history of kind of pushing back against the federal government from its very beginnings, yeah. right? And that has carried through for, you know, centuries. Right. The federal government went to war with us. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. We marched an army here and yeah. we're going to take over. I mean, that's how Utah started. That's before it was even in the country. The, the United States yeah. went to war with the state of, of then, the, the, what was it? It was the territory of Deseret. Yeah. which is modern day Utah, like the United States went to war with us. I mean, so yeah, there is this wow. history, this legacy We're, of- Yeah, um, you can tell that's not forgotten. Right. Yeah. Well, let, so let me, I'll just get to this quote here about um, with Cobra Tate, right? Andrew Tate, he says this. <laughs> this is why he was saying he moved to Romania and he said this, and this is this article. I don't know if we've got, uh, Paul can pull that up, but this and was- Dan, uh, By the way, have, have, you, have you ever heard of Andrew Tate? before not before you guys said it here and I, I would have googled it but then i would have looked like i wasn't paying attention so <laughs> <laughs> yeah so it's a guy that was a former kickboxing championship uh contender and I, I guess he won a championship for a couple of them long story short he got into crypto built up some some uh platforms and things made a bunch of money but here's what he says he says uh, about why he moved from I think it was in the UK to Romania. It says, if corruption exists, which it does, let us uh, let us all play. I like having a society where my money, influence, and power means I'm not below or beholden to any of these beep, beep laws, right? And I thought about that, and I thought, you know, it's, it's more of like an, an elitist attitude. And this is one of the things I've warned against in some of our blogs about you know, having technology sheriffs, right? You either place your your trust in people who are going to basically guard your assets under the construct of a law, or you're going to basically place your trust in software who guard your assets under the construct of that software, both of which are, you know, governance and laws. It's still, it's still a law. It's still written yeah. code. I mean, it's even we even use the same words, Aaron. Yeah, it's codification code. for sure, you know, code. Yeah. But it, it was interesting that, for a guy like this, who's made a lot of money, and I think in some cases people would say he's exploited a lot of people, taken a lot of their money, done different things. I don't know. Again, I'm, I'm not going to sit and judge somebody I've just been learning about recently. But what I can't say is this, is the attitude and my experience, you know, as a 50-year-old dude having some experience in business, government, you know, doing a lot of these things is the wrong one to have, right? It's not about, hey, let's all participate in corruption equally. <laughs> and because that never happens, right? There's always going to be somebody at the top 
he's he's exactly obviously right. at the top of whatever whatever he's doing. That's not what we're about. We're we're probably the anti Cobra Tate, right? We want to work within government and I'll help elect people like yourself or others and get them appointed and build a construct of government that realizes government can be the enemy, you know, or it can be very helpful. It's up to you. It's up to the citizenry, right? They get exactly what they deserve when they vote people into office. Right. Well, and, and, and Aaron, I didn't even take it a step further. You know, you, you ran for office once uh, I ran for office once. There's a, one of my favorite quotes is, I believe it's Plato, it may be Aristotle, but it's, it's from 2,500 years ago, right? <laughs> and he basically said, the consequence of not getting involved in politics is being governed by your inferiors. And, yeah. and I, I really believe that. So I, it, it's so one is working with the government, that's great, but I, I, I would just, I always put out the shout out whenever people talk about government, it's yeah, electing people that are gonna be the type of representative who, or, or elected official who you think is going to do a good job and and actually think get away from electing people who believe in the same kind of social issues you do or social platform type issues you do because those don't affect your day-to-day -day life they're on the fringes even yeah. as important as like some of these issues like gun control abortion these other social issues are to you from a passionate perspective they don't in most cases they don't affect most people's lives it's on the fringe and so you want people who are just going to be, like you said, business friendly, oriented about the around the work of of being in government, and and just make good decisions and and focus on that piece of government. Or alternatively, to get where I started with this, run for office yourself. Like actually put your neck out there and go go be go be the type of elected official you want representing you. Yeah, I, I'll just a really quick emphasis to that as well is that when I ran, I was kind of a you know a 32 year old kid who just thought that there was um, you know a better way to do something. I just thought I had some good ideas, right? And long story short, through a crazy circumstances and, and events, I went from being the challenger to the incumbent in about six weeks because the guy that I was running against did some dumb things and he ended up having to resign. And I was the only one running against him, right? And so then the governor appointed me to fill his seat. So it was like weeks after yeah. I decided to run that I actually became, you know, the house member at 32 years old. I remember uh, come, you know, showing up to the Capitol and they have all the, you know, the troopers standing around kind of guarding the doors and things like that. And I went to walk through the door and he kind of like stood in my way. I was like, hey, you know, Look at me like, what, what are you doing? And I was like, actually, I, you know, I pulled out my little badge and stuff. I'm like, I'm the guy. It's me. Because <laughs> he was like, you know, he, in fact, I think he said, whose intern are you? You know, where are you going? Right. You know, that kind of thing. And I was like, no, it's me. I won. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it was uh, it was pretty interesting. And, and there was one other guy that was 28. So he and I were like the two youngest guys there just learning the ropes, you know, learning stuff. And, and so it can be done. You can make a difference, you know, and, and, and uh, sometimes it's hard. Sometimes you know, you're, you're pushing against a lot of other people that have spent, you know, decades in office or doing these things, but you can make a difference. And especially in a state like Utah, which is why I love Utah. I mean, it's all you got to do is speak up, man. And there's somebody like you or me who is the average person and then eventually learns to, to become maybe a little above average in terms of capability with some experience. Right. And uh, it, so run Every, anybody listening, run for office, do what you need to do because yeah. you can make a difference. So, yeah. OK. So, and then, no, go no, ahead. I, I was just going to add, you know, you also mentioned something that's uh, I think is unique to you. Well, it's not unique to Utah, but it's a strength of Utah. You mentioned business friendly legislature. And I, I, I just wanted to give a little plug to the legislature. It's a part-time legislature in Utah. Yeah. So the senators and representatives have day jobs. And I think you're that- You're not getting rich like, doing this thing. Yeah. Right. No, it's the worst actually. And um, I think you get better outcomes because the folks passing the laws have to go live with them the rest of the year. And you only meet for 45 calendar days. It's like 33 working days. 
And uh, it, it, I think you get better outcomes from that. There's no, yeah. you can't be a professional politician as a legislator in the state of Utah. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so I, I, I'm going to shift gears just a little bit. Joseph, what are you doing on your music, man? What, what are you listening to these days in the den? I want to hear what you're listening to. Don't tell me you're some lame dude that doesn't listen to music or whatever, right? No, I don't listen. It, you just, you just laugh when I say it. What's that? Just laugh when I tell you who it is. Yeah. I'm sure you <laughs> <laughs> What are you listening okay, to these days, so Joseph? These days, um, in the morning times when I'm putting the days together right now, it's actually Beethoven. So I'm listening to Beethoven in the mornings to kind of like, structure out the day whether that be the the don't the lie to us man dude don't nah, lie. Dead, dead serious man dead serious that's what about, that's, right. about that's what about right. 15, 15 to 20 minutes in the morning after that i go over to some like some old school hip-hop so i'm talking biggie smalls tupac like i go fully to like the east coast west coast to try and yeah. get into that competitive spirit right like they you, both you're breaking out your do-rag you got a blue one one day and a red exactly one the next day. exactly i start watching some snoop dogg videos and kind of <laughs> like you know trying to incorporate the whole vibe man um and then from there then it's whatever my team likes to listen to so uh here in panama they like to listen to uh to a lot of different hispanic music um whether it be like reggaeton or like um or like Hispanic hip hop. So after once once they come over and we get to work, any music I hear after that is usually the stuff in the background. But currently, what I'm what I'm personally working on in the studio. Um, so I guess yeah, I guess we'll break it out. Break yeah, it out. Hold like, on for a second, because I don't know if Dan knows anything. Do you know Do, do you know Joseph at all, Dan? No, this is the first time I've I've seen and met Joseph. Okay, Maybe. so let me let me. Uh, help give some context here. So Joseph was on America's Got Talent uh, 2019, got the golden buzzer, you know, went crazy, his song, you know, everybody went crazy for him and stuff. It did really good, got like 30 million views on his golden buzzer thing. And so he's 50, now basically 50 million. 50 million. Okay. All right. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm watching, watching. I'm going to watch that as soon as we get off this. I'm going to go, go find yeah. the YouTube. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. There's a clip right here when he was on America's Got Talent. So he also MCs for Supercross. That's how he and I met actually last uh, probably five, six months ago. Well, I guess a little longer than that. Um, and then also is a, obviously creates his own music. He's got a Spotify cha a channel. He's got all kinds of things going on. So he's releasing some new music as we're, we speak. I think what once every week you got a new song that's hidden? Well, actually... Actually, so I'm glad you mentioned that. So now the structure has changed. There's a nice segue. When it comes to Supercross, I haven't made an official announcement. So this is the first time it's going out there to the world that um, I am actually the host and uh, spokesperson for the new World Series Supercross, World Supercross, Supercross Global. Um, so instead of going from state to state, uh, the rounds go from country to country, and it kicks off October 8th in Cardiff, UK. And um, so now the structure for the music is for each round, I'll be releasing a song and actually filming a music video in each country um, to more encompass the, the sound, more of a global sound. So uh, the song that I release for the United Kingdom round will be more united kingdom sounding um so i don't want to spoil too much there but there's different genres in all of these different areas we're going to and i'm creating more of a uh more of a worldwide global sound which is something that i really haven't seen done by by any other artist but like for plans for 2023 um for the 10 different rounds of the world series of course that'll mean 10 different songs coming out that kind of have the the embodiment of those different countries we're going to. So for example, uh, for a round that's in this, this isn't official or anything, but for a round that may be in Tokyo, um, the music, you know, will uh will definitely incorporate some some Japanese instruments and uh some uh you know, Japanese little things here and there. So um that's now the the current structure of the marketing for the music plan and um and the boys at uh, World Supercross are definitely going to uh, help in terms of 
uh, pushing that type of stuff out there. So, yeah, that's man. Awesome, man. That's cool. Yeah. That's the plans for the music right now. Congratulations. Cool. Say it again. Hey, Dan. Let's Congratulations. Hear for these days. Oh. Have a great time. Thank you, Dan. Thank so, you. I appreciate it. So, so, uh, my, okay. I just read David Grohl's book, the storyteller. He was the drummer in Nirvana and then the, the front front man for, um, Foo Fighters. Yeah. And he just wrote a, an autobiography and, and I would yeah, recommend he, it. The guitarist, I forget his name, but he just passed away, which was sad, but yeah. Yeah. It, it, it's an excellent book. And so, uh, since, since reading that, I've kind of gone back to, so I, my formative years were the eighties and night, late eighties, early nineties, when Nirvana kind of came out in their mind album. And, and so I've been listening to Nirvana a lot and then I never really got into the Foo Fighters, but after reading his book, I, I've been listening to the, the Foo Fighters quite a bit, um, as well. So, and then my go-to, I always get stuck on this. I just love rage against the machine. Um, well, and so hey. I'm not more, man. I mean, that's, that's one of my staples when I'm working. Yeah, out. He's, he's, he's shown me their music. Yeah. I, I actually have some posters sitting right here on my, on my desk, like right over here. So a guy, a French game. So I was in a, a, a garage band or punk rock band, uh, back in high what? school. <laughs> and we, oh, did, we did, uh, we were, we sucked. Okay. Number one, number two, <laughs> we did uh, Rage Against the Machine covers. And so they've always had like this special place in my heart and always gone what did back you play? to what did you play? I played the bass. What? And, and this is a tragic, this is a tragic story, but a true story. Um, uh, so I was a senior in high school and our lead singer, who was a junior in high school, passed away. Uh, and so the, the band died, uh, and, and we, we stopped, um, he, he was coming home from a rave raves were, I don't know if they're still cool back then they were cool, yeah. but he was coming home from a rave with some other friends and, uh, someone, uh, uh, f I don't, I think the driver in their car fell asleep. This was when interstate 15 in Utah didn't, wasn't separate and they crossed over yeah. media and then crossed the media. Yeah. So, wow. So uh, it, it was it was a tragedy in a number of ways, but that's kind of when we stopped. But I still love Rage Against the Machine and and, and kind of what the name exemplifies. Uh, so from a political perspective, you know, politics, uh, as a young kid, I always read a lot of political philosophy and stuff and consider myself an anarchist for forever, not in like the Molotov cocktail sense, but the true sense of individual sovereignty. And um, and then. And, and Rage Against the Machine felt like a lot of what their lyrics and, and, and whatnot seemed to fit well with that. And I still really like them. When I was in the legislature driving up to the Capitol to prepare for the day, I would usually listen to Rage Against the Machine. Um, so you, know, you just, started your day off with Know Your Enemy, right? I mean, that was, yeah. you know. <laughs> right, right. So I, got, I had no idea because I played bass in a band in the early 90s. We toured around. No way. Like that. Yeah, I've got, I didn't even know. So we're going to have to. For him to compare stories, but yeah. so I'm, our band I'm, was called, we called our band Ritalin, which would have been a copyright infringement probably if we ever got yeah. it. <laughs> that is crazy. I didn't I didn't know that part about. You. I mean, how long we've we been friends? Several years now. Yeah, like five or five or six years now. Yeah, I didn't yeah, even know that. that. Twins, man. That's Apparently, insane. not good enough until we get on the, the podcast, right? Um, right. Okay. So I'm listening to Breaking Benjamin uh pantera uh revolution is my name and i love that song that song is so killer um and anything really pantera is cool and i think i am so that's mostly my staple but i think i'm the last person on earth to have discovered how good a singer adele is yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, I was because yes. I was always off in Rage Against the Machine or all those other things, you know, like I, I don't listen to anything. And then one day a YouTube promo of her new video came out. I was like, man, that chick has got pipes. Who is that? You know, yeah. she's only like the most famous singer in the world. <laughs> um, so I was that was cool. But then it, and so I had her on my my little uh, Pandora, uh, Pandora channel. And then another guy came on again last person on earth i know because to learn about this guy's music but lewis capaldi yeah and um remember when we were in in guatemala 
<laughs> and that's when I was still kind of thinking, oh, he's cool and everything like that. But then you're like, oh, yeah, yeah I know this guy. And this totally anonymous girl that we met at the hotel yeah. started to recognize Joseph from America's Got Talent or something. It was like, hey, sing me this song, right? Yeah. <laughs> and it was this song from Louis Capaldi. And I was yeah. like, now I know I am the last person on earth. Because yeah. <laughs> this girl in Guatemala says, that's my favorite song, right? So that's that's kind of what I've been listening to. So we, we got just a few minutes left. I want to make sure we, we cover um, some more crypto for good stuff. Also, uh, just yeah, should, we, should we tease uh, or actually reveal episode two before it drops tomorrow? Yeah, we're going to give everybody a sneak peek of episode two before it drops tomorrow yeah. on uh, your TikTok. And, and Joseph's got like, I don't know, like 800,000, almost a million followers and on all his YouTube and, and yeah, TikTok. Yeah. And you're going to see, see it. Watch this. All right, so we right, so, just found the device. Found the device. Need to know that it's my bike. Yamaha has an app that connects to your bike <laughs> with hard hitting power. And I hear Oh! And I realized that I had the phone number to the person who had my dirt bike. And I decided I was going to give him a call. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, what do I do? And then he picks up. Hello. Hey, what's going on, man? He says, who is this? I don't tell him who I am. Instead, I say, if you had the opportunity to help anybody you know, anyone in your community, with a couple thousand dollars, would you do it? It's a little silence on the phone. He says, yeah, man. I'm all about helping people, man. I make music. So you're down? He says, yeah. Who is this? I say, okay, well, the next question I ask you is going to be the toughest one for you to answer. He says, what is it, man? I said, hey, would you still be down if I told you that my name is Joseph and I'm the owner of the bike you have? There's an awkward silence. I don't know if he's about to hang up. And that's when he says, you know what, man? I'm down. And I said, when can we meet? Now I'm nervous. I don't know if I'm setting myself up to get beat up, but now I have to trust that everything is gonna go to plan and that I can get my dirt bike back. He calls me back and he's like, hey, I don't wanna take a loss on the bike. What? I got a little confused. I'm like, what does he mean he doesn't want to take a loss on the bike? It's my bike. So he's saying, I don't mind giving you the bike back, but I need something in return. Zach, like, I do music. And he's like, look, this Toledo lifestyle where I'm living at, I want something different for myself. I want to make a name for myself. I want to be able to make a specific type of life for myself. What can I do for you, bro? He says, can you help me? marketing. I'm like, yeah, I could do that. People gonna know who you are. If you can show that you're different, change the narrative, show that you're not who we're thinking you are. That'll do all the marketing it has to do. You just gotta be willing. Written up a little contract, both signed it, I'll help him with marketing. In exchange, he's supposed to give me the bike back. I'm gonna head to the Franklin Mall. I'm gonna be walking around there, kind of just killing some time. I don't know if you sleep or anything, but hit me up. Hit me up. I get out to his place, and is when he says, you bring out your bike. All right, so we just found the dirt bike. The person who has it, he needs to go meet someone on it. So he's gonna ride it, and I'm gonna watch him ride off with my dirt bike. For me to know that it's my bike, Yamaha's have an app that connects to your bike every time the bike turns on. So he walks to his garage at his mom's place, and I hear, bam, bam, bam. <laughs> Yeah, he has definitely fried my clutch. Bro, that tire is smoke. I told you, this is my first bike, bro. <laughs> I never rode a dirt bike before this. When I checked the app, I noticed that the app is lighting up and it's showing me that it's connected to the bike. I happened to click a button and I changed the engine's mapping from casual power to a hard hitting power delivery. Meaning that when you twist the throttle, the bike is gonna go a lot faster and hit a lot stronger than what you're used to. So then I press record. Let me show you what I saw. Oh! And at the moment when he hit the ground, did I just witness my man completely destroy himself? Is he knocked out? What do I do? Like if he's on the ground, not moving, do I help him? Do I grab the bike? What's the smartest thing for me to do in this moment? But then he gets up. Bro, are you okay? Hey, hey, hey. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> that's, like a, that's like a pretty serious teaser. I don't know if that's cool or or not. You know? <laughs> wow! Yeah, it was, uh, it was, uh, 
So it's crazy. But and what happens next has to do with a guy who gets shot or was shot five times. Yes. Crazy stuff. Uh, obviously, the place you where you were in Toledo is now super, you know, not what you right? Right. Yeah, no, no. The place was very uh you definitely had to have your eyes open. You had to have your eyes open and make sure that, you know, every step you take is calculated. Every step you take has to be a sure one. You can't hesitate because if you hesitate, it's like it's like a dog. You know how you come across a stray dog on the streets? And as you're walking, it's like if you start to show any signs of hesitation, that's when the dog is going to smell the fear and attack. So every step has to be sure. It has to be, okay, this is what I'm going to do. This is when I'm going to do it. You know, so um, it took a lot of mental focus, mental clarity to be able to uh, to get out there and, and fully, you know, try and execute the way that we did. But, um, but yeah, all I can say is part three comes with one major twist, two major twists, three major, like major twists left Amazing. and right. And uh, it concludes in this in this in this uh, type of harmony that I think, honestly, just doesn't even feel real. It was like a, I don't know, a, a once in a lifetime story for sure. Okay, well, we're going to need to wrap it up. We're 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 hitting our time frame here. A um, couple of things. One, let's uh, really quick again. All this stuff doesn't happen unless smart buys around. Obviously, buy the token, go show up. There's all kinds of videos that you can see at smartfight.com about the token, how to do it, what to do with it. Uh, help fund small businesses. Basically, you're joining a community that basically helps to fund small businesses. We created a token out of it, and that benefits everybody. has a buyback guarantee. It's kind of like a banking type of situation. We're not a bank. But go to smartfight.com, sign up, buy the token. Uh, tomorrow, Joseph's. Part two drops. You just saw it. For, so for everybody who didn't have that, go see it again. It's really cool. I mean, I, you know, I know the ending because I was involved in kind of <laughs> edge, you know, when things were going wrong. Um, but it's, it's been great. Awesome. We're going to do this again next week. And so we'll have a weekly podcast here. Also, give us some comments about you, what you think we ought to name the podcast. The name of the podcast is pretty generic right now. So let's, we'll figure something out. Maybe we'll, we'll figure out a prize or something for somebody who comes up with the best name for the podcast. Dan, thank you so much. Uh, you were better than I thought. My expectations uh -oh. went <laughs> way up here, especially since I found out you played the bass, right? <laughs> I was totally cool. Very grateful for you to take the time. You're a super busy guy. I know that. Uh, and, and glad to have you on. And uh, we'll, we'll do it again uh, next week. It's been a pleasure. It's great meeting you, Joseph. I'm going to go watch your YouTube clip with the golden buzzer right now. Aaron, awesome. awesome. Nice Always you, talking to you. Good luck, everyone. All right. Thanks, everybody. See you next week.